Okay, so conical tank problems come up quite a bit uh, uh, here in example six. Uh, I'm, I apologize, I, there are many iterators, iterations of this problem and I've had to rewrite it many times just to get it out what I was trying to hint at. But first, coffee is draining from a conical filter, okay, with a base, um, with a base diameter of six inches and a height of six inches into a cylindrical cylindrical coffee pot with the same diameter and height of 10 inches. So um, I'm just gonna draw just so we can picture what's going on. So we have a cone, okay, and a, a pot that has sort of the same diameter. Sorry, I'm not the best artist here, but you know, there's liquid going that way. And then the cylinder that it's dripping into here, it's going in there. All right. And then it has sort of some liquid in here and there's some liquid that's pouring into here. The And a little bit of review, um, just so you know, and some things you need to know is first of all, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base times its height. That's true for all rectangular prisms, by the way. Area of the base times the height. So the area of the base of a cylinder is gonna be um, the area of a circle. So cylinder, here we have the area of a circle, which is pi r squared times its height. And for the cone, which we will most likely also need is, um, the area of a cylinder, but one third of that. And rectangular prisms also work the same way, or I should say, um, yeah, polynomial prisms or right prisms work the same way. You take the area of the base times the height, treat it like a rectangular prism. And then if you take a pyramid of that, it's gonna be one third of its volume. So in this case, it's one third and then pi r squared, which is the area of the base times the height. So most likely, because we're talking uh, a rate in terms of volume, and the reason why I know it's volume is that it's in cubic inches, is I probably will need these volume formulas. Now, the coffee is dripping into the coffee pot, and that's the first part of the question. It is saying here, how fast is the level in the pot rising when the coffee in the cone is five inches deep? As a matter of fact, it doesn't really matter how deep the the water in the cone actually is because it's saying that the rate is um 10 uh cubic inches per minute so this is a constant rate all along so at this point it doesn't really change anything so if i look at just the conical part of it it looks like this i'm being told in the directions that the diameter across is um six inches, so that means, oh, ooh, my radius is three inches, so three inches. So I'm just kind of organizing my thinking, and I also know that it's being filled with coffee, so here's my coffee filling up here, right? So at some point, the coffee is dripping in there, it's going in, and the height is then changing as the coffee is filling into our little coffee pot like that. So, and the volume is getting bigger. There's more and more in there. So I know that my dV dt is going to be positive and it's positive 10 cubic inches per minute because again, the volume inside of the coffee pot is getting bigger. We're getting more coffee in there, which is the goal anyways, right? So let's organize our thinking a little bit. There's some things that are constant. So if I have the volume of that cylinder, I have pi r squared times h, but the radius does not change at any given point, whether there's a little coffee or a lot of coffee, a lot of coffee, the radius of that cylindrical shape is not going to change. So this is actually a constant. It's not something that varies. That means I can substitute in the value right from the beginning. So my beginning formula is gonna be pi and then the r, which is a constant. If it varied, I couldn't do this. So I'm gonna write the volume as nine pi h. 
And then I'm ready to take the derivative with respect to time because everything else changes. The volume changes and the height changes. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to time. And we end up with dv dt is equal to 9 pi dh dt. Oh, something unique happens here, by the way. Um, essentially, I get the, the volume, the rate of the volume change is equal to some constant times another rate. That means just reviewing from algebra that they're directly proportional. So the rate of the volume is directly proportional to the rate of the height of this in this particular problem because you have a constant k times something that varies. So you have something that varies is equal to the constant k times something else that varies. So that's a direct variation or directly proportional is what that means, just as an aside. So here, um, directly proportional. That means as one changes, so will the other with a particular constant relationship between them, which is kind of unique for this problem. Does that always happen? No, it did not always, but in this case it does because we have this constant here and nine pi is a constant. All right, so let's answer the problem that's being asked, though. It's saying, um, how fast is the level of the coffee pot? That means the height. I want to find the h dt. That's really what I'm interested in. So I'm going to substitute in um, when the cone is five inches deep, uh, when the coffee in the cone is five inches deep. P.S., it doesn't matter because it goes in at a constant rate. So in this case, it won't matter. You put 10 in 9 pi dh dt. So I could say when a cone has five inches of coffee. Just to, but it doesn't really matter in this case because it's directly proportional. dh dt is going to be 10 over 9 pi and it's going to be inches per minute. So therefore, the level of coffee in the pot is increasing at a rate of 10 over 9 pi inches per minute. And you could stop here just because it's directly proportional. So it doesn't really matter at what time this will happen. It's constantly changing at this rate. But um, when, just to finish and answer the, the question, when the coffee in cone is five inches deep, it again, if you forgot this piece here in this particular problem, you would get away with it because that it's a constant rate for the height in the cylinder all of the time. And the reason that is, is because they happen to be directly uh, um, proportional. Part B, how fast is the level of the cone falling at that time? Hmm, maybe a little more interesting question. So now we have the cone And it has some coffee in there that's dripping out. So here's our coffee, right? And it's kind of pouring out here. So that means the dv dt in this case, the volume in our um, cone instead is negative rate or has a rate that's negative because it's decreasing the amount of coffee as it's pouring out. If I look at it, it's still, the, the given information is that the radius here, because the diameter is three, um, our diameter is six is three, and the height in here is six. However, I'm not really interested in that. I'm more interested in what's going on here for the radius of the coffee part and the height of where there's coffee. So it's not for the whole cone. It's like what's happening to the coffee in that cone. So the way we are always, these conical problems are usually going to be approached is I'm going to look at 
just a little slice of it. And I'm looking at this part here, three, six, and then we have R and H. These are two similar triangles. It's sort of very similar to the shadow problem. You kind of approach it the same way, draw the little triangle on the outside. I can get a relationship between R and H. Um, so in this case, I end up with three over R is equal to six over H or whichever way your um, geometry teachers told you to do it. You could do three, three over six is equal to R over H or whichever way. In this case, I'm gonna cross multiply. Three H is equal to six R. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a minute because I'm gonna try and rewrite the volume in terms of R or in terms of H, depending on what the question is asking. So now I'm gonna go and find the volume formula for a comb, which was one third pi R squared H. And it has this, the, the radius changes as the water goes, or the coffee goes out of the filter, the radius gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and the height is changing. So this varies and this varies so I cannot change that. I cannot put in a constant right now and then take the derivative. I would have to either rewrite the whole problem in terms of R or in terms of H on the right-hand side, or I could use the product rule and then have dr dt and dh dt and substitute in those values. Now I don't have both of those things. So what I'm gonna do instead is, and it makes your life easier. Is it necessary? No, I'm just trying to give you some advice. In this problem, it's asking how fast the level is changing. So I wanna find dh dt. Now, if I wanna find dh dt, it's beneficial for me to rewrite the problem in terms of h. So rewrite in terms of h. And that's easily done because I have a relationship over here between h and r. So I'm gonna replace the r in, with h values or with h here. So I can solve for r in terms of h and rewrite it here on the left-hand side. What do I get? I get um, h over two when I solve for r. And I'm then going to substitute that in for r so that I get the volume formula as one-third pi h over two squared times h. So in other words, it gets to give me ooh, pi over 12, because don't forget to square the two times the three, it gives me 12, and then h cubed. So now I've simplified the problem quite a bit because when I take the derivative with respect to time now, d dt, I end up with less variables. Now, again, I keep saying this, it's not necessary, but you make your problem a lot easier if, if it's possible. So in this case, we get uh, dv dt, oh, I'm running out of room here. So dv dt is equal to um, pi over four h squared dh dt. Now in this case, uh, ps, this is not um, directly proportional or directly, uh, it doesn't vary directly because there's still an h there. So here it matters what h is. So we need to then look at when, when h is equal to five because it says how fast is the cone or how fast is the the level changing in the cone when it's five inches deep. So I'm going up to part A to catch that. So, okay. I also know that dv dt is negative 10. So we're gonna plug in negative 10 is equal to pi over four, five squared dh dt, dh dt. So therefore we get a dh dt of negative, which makes sense, it should be negative because the water is falling or the coffee level is falling inside the filter. So in this case, what do we get here? 10 over 25, so 40 over 25, so eight over five pi maybe? Am I doing that right? 
8 over 5 pi. And then, ooh, that's going to be inches per minute. So the level is decreasing. So therefore, the level of coffee in the cone is decreasing at a rate of negative 8 over 5 pi inches per minute when, now it matters here, here you need to have when h is equal to 5 inches.